I just wanted to give a big thank you to all of my woodland guardians, spirit guides, celestial foxlings, and kitsunes. Thank you guys so much for your support. Good morning world and all who inhabit it. I slept for 10 hours. 10 of them, count them. We have energy, we're doing things. This is the first thing I've done all morning. So we all know that I'm probably gonna fall over my words and it's just gonna be a horrible mess of a time. But, you know, I think I think it's gonna be great. We, we did the gosh darn things and you know what? We came preparing for trouble and it's time, chat and community and everyone else who's watching this that we make it double. I feel like that's the most important thing we can do here. I did go ahead, I got the rare candies into the game as well, just so you guys know. So therefore, um, CB, the Zubat that we got um, last episode, um, that is now leveled up to level 15 because that's the level of the Mon that we caught in the grass. Not in the grass, we fished for it, but you know what I'm saying. So, um, Zubat is where it needs to be. It did not evolve, um, I know, astonishing. Zubat did not evolve at level 15. Um, but, so, we're gonna keep rocking and rolling. Like I said, I know my way around this place pretty gosh darn quick. So, um, we don't have to worry too much on, um, not getting encounters today. Um, we basically should just be able to go straight to the double battle for the most part. Um, and, yeah, we're just gonna rock and roll. I really wanna get more encounters. I really wanna see if we can get something that'll give us coverage for water types. Um, so that is priority number uno as of this very moment in time. There's a way to skip you. Yes, that's how we do it. Okay. Whew. See? Baller. I'm so good at this game. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna let puppy have some time to shine because you know what? We stand puppies in this day, this night, this quiet eve, and... Can we just talk about how weird Team Flare admins look? Like, I'm sorry to anyone who joined this evil organization, like expecting good things to come out of this. Because let me tell like it just, it's not good. Like you would think like being promoted to being an admin and stuff would give you something to look forward to and to be like, wow, I'm gonna be cool. I'm gonna do all these great things. It's like becoming a jock in high school and then finding out that once you leave high school, no one cares that you're a jock. So it's like, it's it's just, it's, I just feel bad for them, you know? They really thought they had it going for them and they turned out like that. And I'm very sorry. And you know, I really shouldn't be the one to talk because for those of you who don't know, I am sorority girl gone gamer. Let's, let's say that. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I guess we, we can talk about it. We can talk about it. So since we have time, um, so I posted on Twitter because there was this like meme that was going around yesterday that was like, what's a story from your lifetime that would make people have this reaction? And the meme was basically like a chick who had like her eyes booking out of her head where it's like, the what? What? So my story to that was, um, didn't have a lot of friends growing up in high school. Girls are absolutely horrible sometimes. So I was friends with the dudes. Like that was me through and through. Never had a lot of girlfriends. And then um, when I left high school, I was like, well now what? Because a lot of the friends that I had either went military or they went out of state. Um, I maybe, I would say I had one solid girlfriend um, that still today is actually like a good friend. Um, but she was going to an entirely different college. And keep in mind, I'm from Yeehaw, Nebraska. So like, it's not like, you know, let's, we'll just leave it at that. So I decided because I was seeing a therapist at a time, I was like, what am I gonna do? Because I'm a kind of person where like, I go crazy if I'm just like by myself, like I have to have human interaction. And back then, like aside from my people that were like my coworkers, and even then, like a lot of my coworkers were like a lot younger than me. So I really didn't want to like, you know, make it weird by hanging out with young, like really younger coworkers outside of school. So, or out of work. So uh, my therapist was like, you should join a sorority. And I was like, okay. I guess, like, you know, I knew the stereotypes of sororities and she was like, just rush. Just like, just try it, just see how it goes. And so I was like, 
I mean, I, I, my, my self-esteem is already just like minimal, like this big, right? So I really don't have anything to lose because the worst thing they're gonna tell me is stuff that I already feel, right? So I go through Rush. I signed up like two days before the deadline, mind you. And for those of you who don't know what Rush is, because I understand that there's a lot of like UK people here on the channel and sorority in the concept of rushing is like way over y'all's head. So let me break this down for you. So imagine different groups. So there's fraternities, which are for the guys and there's sororities, which are for the girls. And my campus that I was on is very different than any other stereotypical sorority or fraternity campus. Because typically what gets associated with sororities and fraternities is partying, um, a lot of alcohol consumption, and just like, basically a giant group that you join to, to just party. Um, our campus was a very dry campus, and to date they have shut down within my lifetime of um, that campus existing. They have shut down three or four different organizations because they caught them partying, and they said you're no longer allowed on campus and kicked them out. So like partying was not on any person who was rushing's agenda because it's like, why would I join a sorority, pay all this money for it to get shut down kind of thing. So we were genuinely joining for like the philanthropic, which is like charity and giving back portion of it, um, which is not to say that all sororities and fraternities are bad, but I'm just saying that there's a stereotype that is publicized in media as well as others. So just wanted to make it clear that that's not what the scene I was trying to join. So um, on my campus for the girls, there were four different options that you could join, right? Um, so basically how rushing works, to explain it, is the best way I can describe it is speed dating. So every single group that's consisted of probably 50 members at that point in time, give or take a little more, a little less based on their retention rates and the amount of seniors who um, graduated, et cetera, et cetera. So they all have a room because our campus didn't let us have houses. So imagine you go into like your main, what do you call it? Like your main, I forget what it's called. The student center, that's what it's called. Imagine you walk into your student center and there's like, you know, all the rooms that are like upstairs that are like your multi-use meeting rooms, stuff like that, that are just giant auditoriums. Um, it was that, it was that. So every single group had one of those rooms and you weren't allowed to see who was in it or anything like that beginning to end until like the door opened, if you will. So uh, keep old moves. Yes, I have to do this because I keep misclicking. Anyways, so went through it. It's like a week long process, mind you. So you get paired up with this group of probably like 10 other peoples if you're not in a group already. And you get a schedule and it says, okay, you're gonna go to sorority number one, insert their name here from like this time. Immediately when that one's done, you're gonna go to this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, etc. So went to sorority number one. Um, and it's basically, like I said, it's speed dating. So you're standing outside their room and they open the door when they're all ready and they do their little, their little like chant. Thankfully at my sorority, they didn't have the door stack, which is what you see on TikTok and a lot of the videos where they're all just in the doorway chanting and screaming in your face. That, that doesn't happen at the one that I'm from. We got an evolution. I thought you were a later evolution. Okay. Well, now we have some serious power. Okay, I will take that. Um, so yeah. You, they open the door and basically like the whole room is like, you know, doing their whole little like, come be a sorority member of our group. We are really kind and cute. You know, like something like that. And so you get paired with one person. So you walk in, they know the order of us coming in. So they have already paired a member of their group to us to meet us at the door. And they're like, oh my gosh, hi, Lindsay. And I'm like, yeah, tee hee, great, that's me. And then they walk you to a corner of the room until everyone's in. And basically you have probably 10 minutes in this room to sell yourself to like this extreme amount. Because keep in mind, they're seeing like 500 people that day. And so you have to make it seem like I'm cool, pick me out of the 500 people that you want to be in your group. So 
literally you talk to the person who met you at the door for like two minutes you barely have a chance to be like hi my name is Lindsay I went to so and so high school I was involved in so and so and so and so and like I really enjoy doing this 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 and this like it's a really cool time I enjoy and then they like cut you off because another person who's already in the organization comes from behind the person you're talking to and they're like oh I'm gonna take over for this person now that way you have the opportunity to talk to multiple people so you like barely have the chance to complete a true coherent thought to anyone um, before they're like, oh, okay, I'm gonna pass you off to Sabrina. Um, it was so nice to meet you again. My name's Tiffany, have fun talking to Sabrina. And then you talk to Sabrina for two minutes and then Rachel comes behind Sabrina is like, oh, sorry, I know you were just talking about what your names were, but it's time for me to talk to you. So it's a very, very like, quick overwhelming experience like you have to like get your stuff out like that um and somehow make it so you stand out and so literally as soon as you leave the room that entire organization and the people who talk to you they score you based on how likely you are to be a member and i didn't realize how thorough that little survey that they have to take is until i was on the other side of it it's probably like a 25 questionnaire over you in like this five minute conversation that you were able to have with this individual. And so I didn't realize how intensive their scoring was. That was that was the little fun, fun moment for me um, on the other side to be like, people answered this about me? Oh my God. Um, and so as soon as you're done at one room, you basically wash, rinse and repeat for all of the other female groups on the campus. So you do that for two days. So then you go back the next day, do the same thing. And they have different themes every single night. So like the first night's like introduce yourself. Second night is like, um, we're gonna talk to you about the charity that we're involved in. Third night is we're gonna talk about the events that we do on campus to like promote sisterhood and whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, it's the third night where you come and basically you sit down at this table and you get a list back of sororities that want to talk to you again. And for most people, like one of them cuts you um, and you get invited back to like the other three. Cause like I said, we had four. Um, I was cut by three of them and only had an invitation back to one. So I was like, okay, sure. Great. Um, and the one that was really heartbreaking about it was I really, really actually genuinely liked one group um, because a chick that I was like, I was friends with her. I would say we went to different high schools, but like we both knew each other. And when she found out that I was rushing last minute and we saw each other in the room, it was like this like girl on girl moment of like, I'm like, we need to get you in here kind of thing. Um, and so I really, really wanted to be in hers and I didn't get a bid back to hers. And I was like crushed that I wasn't um, in that one. So I just remember sitting there at the table that night and being like, what, what do I do? Like, do I leave? Cause the one I got invited to, it's not that I didn't like it per se. It was just the fact that I liked the other ones. Well, I really wanted to be in hers. That's really what it was. Like I had no bad experiences at the one I got invited back to, but I was like, is this worth that? If I'm not like die hard, I want to be this, you know? And so I was like, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna give it a chance because I don't feel like I've given it a fair chance, right? End up going through all the way to bid day, which is the last day where you're invited to join the sorority. Ended up getting like a full blown invitation to join um, because at any point between that third day and the last day, they can still kick you and say like, sorry, we don't want you anymore. Um, so end up getting fully involved in that specific sorority. Um, join it, was in it for two years. Um, met my literal best friend, you guys know Ashley. Um, she was a member of that sorority and she's like, when you join a sorority, you basically get paired with like a mentor to help you and kind of like be your best friend through everything. So she was my big, which is my mentor, which is how Ashley and I met. So like very thankful for her. Um, but she was a senior when I, she was a senior, right? Yeah, cause I had one year with her and then she graduated. Yes, correct. 
So I didn't have a lot of time with Ashley. So that was the sad thing about it. So when I had my like last or the year by myself, I was like, I don't know what I want to do with my life, right? Um, and so she had actually moved to Germany. She got accepted to some like crazy prestigious school out there. She's living her best life in, off in another country while she's from Iowa. So it's not like she's a state away. She's like an ocean away and still is, mind you. Um, and so all of that happened. And like ever since she left, I was not just not having a good time. Like girls were starting to be really mean to each other. Like work was getting really stressful. Um, I'm a social work psychology major. So just my like major itself was very exhausting. Um, because unless you're in that major, like being social work, you see a lot of horrible things. So it's just like mentally and emotionally exhausting at that point, seeing the things that you're seeing every single day and like the topics that you have to talk about. And like, it's a whole different ball game than just going and doing statistics for a day. Um, and so not having a good time, situation ended up happening where like it was very 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 bad like one person decided to make a lot of horrible decisions um and we were like is this like a safe situation to be in like do does someone who is of a higher authority such as like police need to be handled to do a wellness check on this person because they are not mentally coherently Okay, and it was very obvious based on the stuff that they were saying that they were not mentally there the way that they typically were. And so after that entire situation that took about three weeks long um, blew up, um, I was just like, you know, I'm not sure if college is exactly what I want to be doing, at least at this campus. Like I wasn't having a good time. Like I was still passionate about my major. Um, but with the whole situation, like that is a whole other can of worms that like, if you've been around my stream, some of you might know, but like basically crazy cuckoo person was crazy cuckoo and um, ruined the chances of a lot of things for a lot of people. Um, so I was like, you know what? I just, I just want a fresh start. Like these aren't people I really want to be around. Um, Ashley was gone from the sorority. I was like, I don't, what, the, there's nothing holding me here at this point in time. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do what Ashley did. I'm going to study abroad because it worked for her. There's nothing tying me to Nebraska. Um, my number one pick in college, not college, high school before I graduated was this university down in Georgia. Um, cause I had friends that lived down in Georgia, not Dylan and all them, like actual genuine friends, not even associated. They don't know who Dylan is. Um, but I was like wanting to move to Georgia, couldn't afford out of state tuition. Um, and Ashley was talking to me. She's like, yeah, you want to study abroad? Here's how I did it. And was giving me like the step-by-step -step tutorial. Like it's way cheaper than out of state tuition. Studying abroad is so much easier. So, um, ended up going through with that process. Um, at that point in time, I was dating someone who lived in England. We were doing a long distance thing for over a year. Um, shout out to Ryan. Hello. Um, but yeah, so all of that was happening, right? And so ended up getting accepted to every single university I applied to out in England. Um, had a student loan that was all set to go. I had a name on a house out there. I had my plane ticket booked. I was meeting with like the USA ambassador, helping people do this. There were Zoom calls. Like I literally had my luggage packed and ready to go because I had like two months before I had to actually like move, move across the continental United States. And then I get this phone call that's like ring, ring, tee -hee. So hi, it's us at the only student loan company in America that works with um, out of the country um, financial aid. So I have a little bit of an update for you. Um, so your student loan information has updated due to like a new policy thing. Um, and your loan that was manageable before, um, I don't know how to tell you this nicely, so I'm just gonna tell you it. 
Um, your loan is gonna cost you $100,000 per year that you are in England. And, and that, that was a pill to swallow. <laughs> and so I was like, per year. Not, not like all together. We're talking per year. It is going to cost me $100,000 to live in England. Keep in mind, like I said, plane ticket already booked and paid for. House, have a name on it. Like, I was like, what? Huh? And so ended up having to, obviously, because I am in college with a single mom who is a teacher, um, there wasn't a lot of like income to support that at that given point in time. So I was like, what does one do? Um, ended up pulling out of that. And it was only because of that situation where I was like, what, what do I do? Because I'm not going back to school at the place I was going to school at. Um, I didn't want to be in Nebraska. I wanted to be, if anywhere, Georgia, but, um, and the other option was England. And I'm like, I don't want to go somewhere where I don't know anyone. So what do I do? Choose a number. Interesting question. <laughs> Siri said, interesting question. Right. <laughs> Choose a number between one and three. That would be three. Of course it is. Choose a number between one and six. It's three. Oh, okay. Choose a number between one and five. The answer is two. Okay, cool. We've done it. Peanut butter. Who is peanut butter? Please introduce yourself. Um. So anyways, I wasn't sure what to do. And at that point in time, there was a server that existed. Um, you guys know the musical genius, Scott. Um, Scott had a server that was just full of content creators. So all of us, basically, if we had nothing to do or were bored throughout the day, like we would just get in these video calls with each other and like 20 people would join at a time, something like that. And so um, there was a point in time where I was in call with like me, um, someone who shall not be named, Tobin. <gasps> ben Doobie's here! Peanut butter! that we trust and love. Oh my gosh. You're a Let's get you to level 18 just as you should be. Let's get you to level 18 just as you should be. Let's get you to level 18 just as you should be. You're the bestest boy, bestest friend. Wait, did he not have? He learned growl. Peanut butter, what is your moveset, honey? Peanut butter, what did you come into this world? No, peanut butter, what did you come into this world knowing? Peanut butter, did, did no one give you the moves that you need to succeed in this world? Peanut butter, I just want to talk. Peanut butter, I just want to talk. Do you not have any moves, honey? Oh, little Dooferton. Little Dooferton. Come on, come on, Doofy, you can do it. Pave the way, put your back into it. Tell us why, show us how. Look at where it came from, look at you now. Zuckerberg and Gates and Buffett do for tens, can freaking suck it. <laughs> Peanut butter. <laughs> I care him so much. <laughs> you wanna learn water? <laughs> you had you had Aqua Tail. Okay, so it did have a move. It did. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so funny. <laughs> Oh my god, peanut butter. <laughs> I love the name. Oh my gosh, okay. 17. I'm like crying out of one eye. <laughs> oh my gosh. You want to learn a headbutt? Come on. Come on, Doofy. You can do it. Pave the way. I understand defense crow rollout is a strat, but I don't want to set up. <coughs> Okay, so what is what is your ability? Let's You have pickup. Holding the lefties though. 
You're level 18. Is there a way to get another... Can we get that other encounter now? Maybe. Hold on. That's not what I wanted. So I was going to say, if we get another encounter and we get the water coverage that we need, I'm down to, like, reinvent the team a little bit. We should be able to. We should be able to. I need... Someone needs to learn fly. Okay, you know what? Someone in the box. Someone in the box, you're learning fly today. How about Zubat? Zubat, can you learn fly? Um. So anyways, back to the story. Um, so basically what ended up happening out of that, I was in call with, um, Ryan at the time, um, and a bunch of other people was explaining this entire situation that I'm telling you guys. And I'm sure as your guys' eyes are, their, their eyes were bugging out of their heads and they're like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's, it, huh? And so basically what ended up happening is he was like, so wait, you wanted to move to Georgia before all of this. And I was like, yeah <laughs> yeah I was and he was like well we're looking for people to move like if you if you want to move down here like because at this point I'd never even met Ryan in person like the tenure had not even happened at this point and so there was no like meeting opportunities aside from like PAX East like I was at PAX East the same year Ryan was at PAX East, but we weren't in the same social circle. So we passed each other a lot of times. Like I saw them and was at the same parties as them, but we never like had an interaction like face to face. And so, um, is this where I want to go? I can't see. I don't think it's that one. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so Ryan offered for me to move to Georgia at that point and was like, yeah, if you need friends, like, will give you friends like you don't have to worry about that and I was like I mean oh okay and so basically because of that entire interaction I ended up in Georgia because literally like six months later there was a group of three of us who all moved down and we just haven't left well I haven't left the other two did <laughs> Taylor moved to Georgia and um, that who shall not be named is no longer making content. So, so that that's how I moved to Georgia, everyone. It's a crazy wild ride, but that's how I got here. <laughs> We're doing great. Also, um, the fact that this Pangoro is level 36, which means that whatever Mon we swap it out with is actually gonna be a decent level. Kind of excited for it. Ooh, that did good damage. Okay. Amber, why do you have to be so good at attacking? Okay, we're just gonna put... Okay, you're not gonna go to bed. Oh, you do so much damage. Okay, one more hypnosis. Please land. Whew. Okay, we're good. We're good. I just want one more Mon, and I just want it to give me water coverage. That's all that I want. That's all I've wanted this entire series. And the one Mon that we have can't evolve yet. I almost did the master ball, guys. I almost threw the master ball. That would be so bad. Okay. One, two, three. Damn boy, Luke. Who got verified? Mind you. Also, fun fact. Today, if you guys are watching this the day that this drops, today is Lex's birthday. So please make sure that you go show Lex, Dylan's uh, wife, Brenna's mother, if you will, um, some love and tell her happy birthday because it would mean the entire world to her. So please, 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 please show her all the love. She's a great mommy. I still need to meet Brenna. I feel like I'm like the only person in Georgia who hasn't had a chance to meet her yet. <laughs> I just want to meet the little chunky nugget. She's just got the little chunky cheeks and I just want to go boop, 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 and then I want to take your nose and I want to go boop. You know, that's, that's really all I want to do. I have simple life expectations and requests. You know, not a big deal in the slightest. Um, so let me. Oh, oh not e ah, ah, ah. We're gonna fly back. All right, and depending on what we hatch here, like I said, I'm willing to reinvent the team a tiny bit, but we have to have coverage for water types. <laughs> that is priority number uno. Okay. 
Let's see. I can't believe we got peanut butter. Okay. Where, where, okay, there you are. <laughs> Modest with bulletproof. Okay. Choose a number between- Siri here. Let me know if I can help. Hey Siri, you can help. Hmm, is there something else I can help with? Yes, there is. I'm so glad you asked. Choose a number between one and three. It's two. Box two. Choose a number between one and six. The answer is four. Okay, we got two options, heads or tails. Choose a number between one and two. It's one. Okay, there it is. The row that hasn't been chosen yet. So Casper the Friendly Ghost. Casper the Friendly Ghost is here, going to be level 36. Yes, 36. I wanted to make sure it wasn't 38. Casper the Friendly Ghost. You could be an electric type Casper. That'd be pretty cool. Oh, you hatched real quick. What are you? What are you? Casper the Friendly Ghost. It do be. But unfortunately, you are a rock type. Rock or ground? One of the two. I feel like you're rock. Casper. Frickin' frackin' flippin' fluffers. Okay, listen. If you... If you, when this egg lock happened, sent in water coverage. <laughs> I just want to know where you guys are. Can you guys make yourself known? Do not tell me what you sent in. Do not. I repeat the words. Do not tell me what you sent in. But do you exist? Do I have hope to hold on to? Let me know. <laughs> Oh my goodness gracious. It's fine. All right. Slowly but surely. Come on, Casper, you can do it. Oh, we didn't even check out your moves or abilities yet. Attack boosted nature with pound, astonish, defense, curl, and mud slap. Holding a power band. Okay. Okay, okay. I see you. I hear you. I understand you. What level do you evolve? I actually don't know what level you do the gosh darn things at. I mean, we're gonna find out and it's gonna be great. All right, you know what? It's time for speed up. It's time. I don't know if I can tell a difference. I don't know if I can tell a difference. It's a little faster. 23. Come on, Casper. You can do it. Pave the way. Put your back and do it. Tell us why. Show us how. Look at where you came from. Look at you. Oh, you get magnitude this early? I mean, okay. Okay. 26. 27. 28. 29. 30. Six more. Six more. Dynamic punch? No. That's the one that's like a 50-50 shot. I think. I think I did that right. I hope I did that right. Okay. 34. 35! One more. Just one more. You want to learn Nightshade? No. No. You don't need it. 36. Okay. Great. It's been done. Okay. So, we're fine. We're doing great. Um, we got some encounters. Um, we'll keep going forth and prospering. I know that there's, I think it's this route where there's the like haunted little spot where you can go underground and then there's like the trash cans and all that kind of stuff. So I think we can technically get a ghost encounter. If it's not this route, that's like right now, it's the one that's after it. So we can do that next time as well. So we'll have some encounters. Freaking water types, man. Freaking water types. I know we technically have Grow Vial in the box, so like, there's at least an option. I just, I just don't know if I want to run Grow Vial. It's just, it's so frail. 
That's the problem. Like, I feel like if you blow on it, it dies. So we technically have at least a option. So like, I see it. I do understand that like grass is good against water, but it's just the fact that it's like, I don't, I don't really know if like I'm feeling, I'm feeling it. So we'll see. We'll do our gosh darn best guys. But with that, I hope you have a wonderful and fantastic rest of your day. Um, I will see you guys Monday with another episode of this wonderful, fantastic game. And I will see you guys later. Bye.